Good afternoon to you lovely real entrepreneurs and happy Friday. How are you doing on this hot, 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 hot Friday afternoon here in Dubai? Greetings to you. Where in the world are you? Do let me know. Give me a wave. Say hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I will wait for a few more of you to join. I hope that you are doing very well. Good afternoon to you. Welcome. How are we doing today? Thank you for joining. Do say hello. Greetings from Dubai, where it is hot. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Where in the world are you? Do let me know. Nice to see you. Do give me a wave. Let me know where you are and how you are. Hello, Sammy. Hi, Jan. Nice to see you. Did I see Fiona or was it MJ there? Hello, hello, nice to see you. Is that Miles? Hi, Miles. Lovely to see you. Well, good, lovely to see you. Good afternoon. Happy Friday to you. Um, do tell me how you are. I hope you're having a great week. How is your family? How's your business? How's your team? Do give me a wave. Say hello. Nice to see you. A few pinging things coming up now. Uh, thank you for joining. Do let me know how you are. Are you enjoying the sunshine where you are? Um, or is it cold? Is it hot? Do let me know. Um, even though I'm here, I'm still British. So we've got to start off by talking about the weather, right? Um, almost the end of June. Can you believe that? How are you feeling about that? Or almost that mid-year point. So let me know how you're feeling about that. Let me know what you've been working on this week. Uh, has it been a good one? I know that things are still kind of moving around with dates, like your Freedom Day. Is it coming? Is it not? So, um, yeah, how are you coping with all of that? It's kind of difficult to, to plan, right? How do, you, how do you manage to plan and run your business with all of this uncertainty? So hope that you guys are doing okay. Thank you so much for joining. Lots of new joiners to this community. We're getting up close to the 1,000 mark. Um, two years in and we're close to 1,000 lovely real entrepreneurs. So welcome to each and every one of you. I'm really passionate about serving you and giving you lots of great value, not just actually in these weekly lives from wherever I am in the world. Today it's Dubai, so greetings from Dubai, but also in my weekly Ask Me Anything slots, which are held at 3 p.m. UK time every Monday, where you put your questions in the chat and we get a bit of a conversation going. I really want you to know that you are not alone. Please feel free to post your questions, your challenges into this group. Let me know where you're stuck or what questions you have. So tell me how you've been doing this week. I hope that you and your business are thriving, but do you know what? If you're not, then that's okay. Please do let me know what support you need. You are not alone. So enough chit chat, shall we get going? Welcome to my weekly live at 12 noon UK time every Friday, where we talk about how you can simplify, grow and enjoy your business. Whether you're just starting out or you're several years in, whether you want to build a nice lifestyle business or you're chasing world domination, I am here to support your journey. Last week, we were looking at knowing your numbers, even if you don't think that you're very good with numbers. We talked about your high level plan. We talked about your three month cash flow forecast. And we looked at the three numbers that every business owner needs to know. If you didn't get a chance to join me live last week, you can find the recording in this group along with the recordings of all the other lives that I've done. They are all organized into guides. We have a simplify, we have a grow, and we have an enjoy your business guide so that you can quickly find the support that you need right now. As you know, I tend to take my cues from you in terms of what would be helpful for me to cover during these lives. Sometimes maybe I'll read about something or reflect on a past experience and take the learnings from that to share with you. Or I might share some things from my book with you or what I'm working with my clients on. But most often these lives come from the conversations, questions and requests that I get every day from this community. So do let me know where are you stuck? What questions do you have? What challenges are 
you facing? So today's live has been inspired actually by several clients that I'm working with at the moment, as, as well as a couple of questions that I've had recently on this topic. So today we are talking about packaging up your services. And actually this is also something that I'm writing about in my, in my new book, in my second book, so one of the challenges with services is sort of productizing what you do. You know, it's difficult sometimes to think of a service in terms of it being a product, but, you know, how do you make it consistent? How do you make it repeatable? How do you package up what you sell and how do you price it? other than just you know by the hour or by the day which is um, what many people do when they're selling services if you have aspirations to grow your business and i know that many of you do you're going to have to make some choices how do you persuade your clients maybe to deal with other people in your business and how do you extract yourself from all the delivery of services services if that's what you want to do so many business owners burn themselves out completely overwhelmed and wrung out never enough hours in the day everybody wanting a piece of them let's make sure that that doesn't happen to you as always today's live is practical and simple it's designed to give you some things to think about but also some action that you can take today so today I'm going to talk about how to pack, package up your offerings, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about selling, which is obviously uh, very much related to this. Sound good? Okay, then let's get started. So do you charge your current clients by the hour or do you charge them per project? Do you work on a time and materials basis or rather a sort of fixed price statement of work type arrangement? What you need to remember is that your potential clients have a problem and what they need is a solution. It's easy to kind of get caught up in, the, in our own products, in our own services, rather than continuing to think about it from the client's perspective. People don't want a hammer. What they want is a picture on the wall. They care much less about how you solve their problem. What's important is the end result, is the outcome. So they buy a hammer, not because they want a hammer, but because they want the picture on the wall. And so your client is very focused on that end result. You might be very focused on kind of what type of hammer in this example, um, but they really don't care. What they want to know is, will it help me put my picture on the wall? So what is your product or service? What are you actually selling? And by that, I mean not, what, not what's the thing or the service, but what's the result? What's the outcome are you achieving for your clients? That is where we need to start this conversation. What is it that you're actually selling? Yeah, so if you think about me, what I'm really selling is clarity and time. I help you maximize your time. I help you get clarity in terms of your priorities. Yes, the way that I do that is through business coaching, but you don't really care about that. What you care about is the outcome that I'm gonna to deliver to you, and it's exactly the same for your clients. So let's consider how we package up what you do in a way that takes your clients from where they are today to where they want to be so again using me as an example i take my clients from overwhelmed stressed burning themselves out to clear organized and on their way to simplifying and growing and enjoying their business and so you have to be focused very much on that end result and that will help you think through this process now for any type of outcome or result, there will generally be three types of buyers. There are those that want to figure things out themselves, the do-it-yourselfers. There are, there are those that want help and support through the process, the done-with-yous. And then there are the ones that just want to pay for a solution, somebody else to fix their problem for them. So that's the done-for-yous. pages are getting stuck. If you think about anything that you've ever considered buying, anything at all, you will have put yourself into one of those three categories. And it will be different for every single thing that you buy. For every single purchase, you will choose to put yourself in a different one of those three categories, but you will always be in one of those three categories. 
You might have a natural tendency, so maybe you're someone that just generally likes to do it yourself, or maybe you're somebody that just generally likes to pay somebody else to do it. But you will, it, that will depend on um, um, many different things. So the one that we choose will depend on, for example, how we feel about the outcome that we're looking at, how interested we are in the process, how much time and money we have, and many, many other factors. But it's really important then to think about your different clients and how they might be approaching your, your services. So if we just look at these in a little bit more detail, so let's start with the DIY with the do-it-yourself people. This is where you teach people how to do it themselves. It's generally a great solution because it's inexpensive for the client and you're actually empowering other people. You're, you're teaching them how to solve their own problems, which is, which is great, right? Very positive. So video training is an example of this. It offers very high value, especially if you can offer the audio to download so that your clients can listen to it whilst they're out and about on the move. You can also include a workbook for them to work through to give people that sense of making progress. We all like ticking things off a list, don't we? Um, private online community groups such as this one are a really important part of offering your DIY clients a really good value and allowing them to meet and support each other who are going through, the, you know, supporting those people that are going through the same process as they are. You'll find that what happens when you do this, that they will answer each other's questions and kind of coach each other so that that community becomes a really highly valuable element of your service. And that's certainly what I find in the programs that I run. The truth is that many of your clients, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but many of your clients won't actually do the thing that they have paid for you to teach them. It's a sad but unfortunately true fact that most people lack the motivation and commitment to do the work consistently on their own without any kind of follow through and so you'll find unfortunately a disappointingly large number fall by the wayside but it is still important to consider how to serve people those people that want to give it a go themselves it's important to give people a way to experience being your client without too much commitment or cost which brings us on then to the done with you service and that's kind of the next level up if you like and this is where you're teaching someone how to do something but you're actually mentoring them through the process of actually doing it either on a one-to-one -one basis or in small groups and this option is for someone who wants more personalized support and guidance more access to you and your expertise somebody that kind of wants a bit of a helping hand and maybe some accountability through the process as well so this option obviously is more expensive because it involves your time, but it's a really powerful way for your clients to learn. Oh, excuse me. It's a great way for your clients to learn, but it also provides you with really invaluable insights into what other problems they have that you might also be able to solve for them. What I would say here is try to avoid simply charging by the hour for this. Much better to package up your knowledge with training materials and also include some one-to-one -one time with you if you're, if you're working in a group setting. And now we come to the done for you um, category, which is the third, the third level, if you like. This is where you actually offer to do the service for them. This is obviously a premium priced offering um, for those people that are time poor and just want the problem fixed. Now, you really do need to think about whether or not you want to offer a done for you service. And if so, what kind of services you really want to offer and what you want to get yourself on the hook for? Are you offering strategy? Are you going to supervise the implementation? Are you going to do the work yourself? Do you need to hire project managers, developers, designers, depending on what we're talking about here? So it does need to be thought through. Let me explain those three types of clients by using myself as an example. So my potential client is you. 
you need assistance with how to simplify, grow and enjoy your business, whether you're just starting out or you're several years in. And I know how to do that because not only am I doing it myself in the several businesses that I run, but I have helped and I am currently helping many others to do the same. But in order for you to be able to leverage the knowledge that I have, I have to package it up for you. So let's have a look at some of the ways that I do that that you'll be familiar with. So for the DIYers, for the do-it-yourselfers, I have several offerings if you think about it. There's my book that many of you have, have read and found value from, The Real Entrepreneur, How to Simplify, Grow and Enjoy Your Business. It's low cost, it's full of great value and it will help you overcome the challenges that you face in your business. There's also this community, of course, and this, these lives that I do every week, um, this one that you're watching right now, either live or later on in the recording, um, full of great value and uh, full of great value, I hope that you will agree, and of course, completely free to all of our lovely real entrepreneurs in this community. So, but these things that I offer for the DIYers, the book and the community, they also serve another purpose, if you think about it. They help you get to know me. They help you understand the way that I think and explain things. And they give you a good sense of what working with me might be like. And so when you decide that you are ready for a more done with you service, then you're much more likely to consider me as an option. You'll inquire about my coaching programs or my one to one service where you'll receive much more hands on and specific support re relevant to you and your business. The done for you model, I think, is actually very interesting. I know that many consultants will actually go in and do work in their clients' businesses. They may almost be like an internal head of sales or head of marketing. They may get involved in product development or strategy like directly in their clients' businesses. I often uh, get offered um, COO roles um, in, uh, with my clients, which is of course very flattering, but it's not part of my business model. But I, you know, the, the main thing for me is that I want you to stay accountable for your business. I see far too many business owners passing the buck and using money to try and paper over problems that will only get worse as they scale. I want to help all of you build sustainable businesses and that means putting the right structures in place from the start. If you're too busy to think about some of the issues which may be with you by the way and you don't really want to think about it or face it, then I want to help you understand and face what's going on and how to manage it better rather than just simply chucking it at somebody else to do and that's why I don't offer a done for you model, except that for some clients, I do run a regular team session to hold people accountable, keep on top of actions and drive progress. So I do get involved in the management um, of, of, of progress, if you like, for some of my clients, but I'm very careful not to let the business owner off the hook. Uh, from running their own business. So I won't do that, for example, um, in clients, if the business owner's like, can you just do that, Lisa? The answer is no, I will do it if you're in the room. <laughs> I'll do it if you're on the call, uh, but I'm not gonna do it instead of you and I'm gonna hold you accountable too. So that's, that's a bit about um, how you can understand those kind of three levels um, through the lens of a business that actually most of you understand well, which is mine. So in many cases, you probably won't have an offering for your a done for you clients. Um, I, as I say, I'm quite careful not to step into my clients' businesses too much. It is your business after all. I can help you a lot, but it is up to you to do the work. So it, depending on your services, you'll make a decision about which of those three levels um, you want to offer, but I do want you to think about them and think about what that would look like in your business, how those three levels apply to you and what you do. Do you have offerings in the do it yourself, done with you, done for you um, sort of categories? How could you develop sort of three levels of service? What would that look like in your, in your business? 
Because what we're looking at is giving people not only what they want, but also what they need and also what they can afford. So you're trying to balance all of these things out. And, and hopefully what I've just shared with you is, is gives you some things to think about in terms of how you package these things up. It's all about packaging the value that you are offering to your clients. Don't forget, they don't really care about the process. What they really care about is the result at the end, the result that you're going to deliver for them. And they care about how quickly you're going to do that, of course. Now, what I'd like to do now, what I'm going to do now is to move on to selling and give you a few thoughts about uh, selling very related to what I've just been talking about. So selling makes many of us feel quite uncomfortable too many connotations of sleazy and aggressive car salesmen or unwelcome telly sales cold calling, right? The truth is that most of us absolutely hate being sold to, but we love to buy. So there are a few reasons why you might personally have very strong feelings about sales and your relationship with selling. You may believe things about sales that simply aren't true. So maybe you've had negative experiences of being sold to, sold at, or maybe you're trying to sell or you've tried to sell before and you've, you've struggled to do that successfully. If you hate sales, and lots of people tell me they hate sales, if you're one of those people that hate sales, it's likely that you believe it's something that you're doing to somebody like I'm selling to you. Maybe you believe actually that selling requires you to convince someone to buy something that they don't want or they don't need or that they can't afford. Maybe that's what you believe and maybe that's why you hate selling. The truth actually is quite different. Good selling is about helping your potential client make an informed decision about what to do and how to do it. And like so many other things, selling is a process that can be learned. Of, of course, there are natural born salespeople who can build rapport really easily. But if you're prepared to put the work in, anyone can learn to sell effectively and very importantly, sell authentically. So I'm going to take you through the three steps or phases, if you like, of, of the sales process. It is really vital that you don't move on to the next step before you're sure that you are in agreement with your potential client about the step or the phase that you're currently in. So this process that I'm about to take you through, it might take several conversations or maybe it might just take a few minutes. The speed is not important. What is important is that you follow the process. It depends on many different factors how long this takes, of course. In some cases, you actually might even need to do this entirely without speaking to your customer, which is one of the real challenges about the last few years, how much um, people have already checked you out before they come any, before you even know they exist. Um, apparently, maybe even as much as 75 or 80% of the decision is already made before you even know your potential client's name. Uh, and so, so you have to think about this process, but not necessarily in a conversation with somebody. You need to think about how you do this online um, with your customer engaging with the story that you're telling, but without you having an opportunity to get any feedback along the way. You still, regardless of how you do it, whether it's a conversation or whether you're doing this online or a bit of both, you still have to move through these three phases before someone will, will become a client. You will never get a client without them going through these three phases. As I say, it might happen in a few minutes, it might happen over, over a few years. I've had people uh, contact me after years after our first conversation and, and, and they're ready to become a client. So this process can take a long time or a very short time. Okay, so step one is all about agreeing with your potential customer the problem that they have and the urgency of that problem. They need to know that you understand, that you get to what they're struggling with. That's the first step. If you're selling something online, you may be communicating via, um, via the written word, via text or via video, but you still need to get on the same page in terms of what the problem is. So you need to be articulating the problem in a way that your client's going to go, ha, huh, yes, they really get it. They, they, they really understand. 
Until your potential client believes that you understand their problem, they will not consider moving forward in the sales process. So they may watch many, many videos that you've recorded. They may read many um, social media posts or blog articles that you've written. Um, but until they are convinced that you get their problem, they're not, they're not moving. They're staying in, in phase one. You also need to communicate and agree on the urgency. How critical is the problem and how quickly does it need to be fixed? I meet people all the time who are frustrated with potential clients not buying, but that's because the client is not feeling the pain or the urgency. You might be able to see why they need a solution right now, but unless your potential client sees it, then they will not buy. People buy for only one of two reasons. It's really very simple. All of us, all of us on the whole planet, we only buy for one of two reasons. To avoid pain or gain pleasure. And all the research points to the avoidance of pain being a far stronger driver than moving towards pleasure. They buy, they buy what they want, not what they need. And it's really important that we all understand that. We are creatures of emotion, as I've said many times, people buy what they want, not what they need. So your challenge is, can you find a way of giving your clients both? Because if you just give them what they want, it might not work, it might not fix their problem. So you also do need to give them what they need you might be able to see, <clears throat> as I said, why they need the solution right now, but until and unless your potential client sees it, they will not buy. So your job is to help them understand the potential implications of failing to act. Share your experiences, share examples of people who failed to act in similar scenarios, share case studies of people who did act and what happened to them. Do not try to persuade. What you are trying to do here is you are seeking to educate. I know a man <laughs> who is so passionate about what he does. It kind of oozes out of him in every, every single communication. He's just so passionate about what he does. But the problem with that when you're so passionate about what you do is that sometimes you bombard your potential clients. And this is what he does. He bombards his potential clients with all the reasons why they have to act now and it's so urgent. And it's just overwhelming and off-putting. I can, I can tell you personally, from personal experience, it's just like, whoa, enough already. So be careful not to push too hard, yeah? There's a, there's a speed, there's a, there's a kind of a rhythm to a sale, and you need to feel that with your client. And it is difficult if you're not actually talking to them, but you kind of need to try test different things and try and get the balance right. Because if you're pushing too hard, it will just put people off even if everything that you're saying is completely right. You might be thinking this year, for example, and they might have in their minds, oh yeah, some point in the next five years. Yeah, time scales are really important to get clear on. So if you're in a conversation, this is a lot easier. And what you must do in a conversation is summarize the problem and the timelines and make sure that you're in, in agreement. So based on our conversation today, we have identified that the problem is really X and that it really ideally needs to be solved this year. Are we, do we agree? Do we agree, have I articulated the problem correctly? And are you also saying that you really would like it fixed this year? Yes, okay, yes. So now we're ready to move on to phase two. Do not move on to phase two unless you are on the same page. If your client does not say yes, do not move. Okay, so step two is the one that most often gets missed. And that is where we share a vision of the solution, not your solution, not yet, but the types of solutions that you think are best for your potential client. You, so what you're doing is you're painting a picture of the future. You're talking about the outcomes and you're talking about how you might get there, but not you. No, we're not talking about our solution yet. We're talking about the different ways that your potential client could solve their problem. 
The biggest mistake that I see over and over is that people jump into describing their solution and it's too soon. The customer is really, really unlikely to buy in phase two. So what kind of a product or a service will give them the outcome that they want and why? Do you think that a structured process where the client is taken through step by step will work or would they be better suited to a do it yourself model that we just spoke about a minute ago where they move at their own pace and figure it out themselves? You've got to really figure out what they're looking to achieve and get it, give them some options um, that exist in terms of the types of solution but not products or services yet. Again, this might take several conversations or you might not even be in, in conversation. So you need to communicate this through your messaging and through your website. And only once you've agreed on the type of outcome that they want, a really clear picture, the type of solution. So, you know, are they looking for a training course? Are they looking for self-paced learning? Are they looking for more of a consultancy model? Like, What are they actually, what's going to work for them? What do they have in their mind? And you might have to prompt them um, and give them some different options. We are not talking about your solution yet. Only once they've agreed, yeah, I think some kind of a course you know some kind of a course where I have regular calls in a group or something yeah that kind of thing that might work for me okay now step three or phase three is then how do you do whatever it is you've agreed on as a potential outcome and I have to say in phase two you might help your client conclude that what they really need is something that you don't offer. And this is where being an ethical salesperson is really important, right? You, selling is not about selling something to someone that they don't need or is not going to solve their problem. Um, it's about finding the right solution for them. And if that happens to be one of your products or services, then fantastic. And if it doesn't, then that's okay too. Recommend them to someone who, who can help them. So if you provide the kind of solution that, that, that you and your potential client have agreed is going to be the one for them, now we can move on to, well, would you like me to share with you the way that I achieve this for my clients? Actually, often the client will actually ask you, well, how do you, you know, do you do this, Lisa? Is this the way, you know, tell me about how you do things. And that's great because that tells you very clearly that they are ready to move into phase three. So here we are describing our method or our process. Um, we are also describing what makes us different or special or unique. We are also referring to case studies or examples of other clients. And do you know what? If you've done the first two steps right, then the sale is actually easy. You're giving them the opportunity to buy from you. It actually becomes a buying process rather than a sales one. If you go through these three steps thoroughly and properly and you get agreement after each step, then there are only two reasons why the person won't say yes. You want to know what they are? There are only two reasons. Either they don't trust you or they don't trust themselves. This is where they'll talk about price, they'll talk about timelines, they'll tell you that they're going to think about it. Your challenge is to figure out as quickly as you can which one it is. Do they not trust themselves or do they not trust you? And then try and help them overcome it. If they don't trust you, they're worried that you won't be able to deliver what you promise. So maybe they need a guarantee, maybe they need some more social proof or maybe they need some actual evidence. If they don't trust themselves, then they're worried about making a bad decision. They're struggling maybe with confidence. Depending on your expertise, you may or may not be able to help them with this, but examples and proof can help here some, sometimes. Okay, so these are the three phases. And just to quickly recap, number one, we're talking about and we're getting clear and in agreement about the problem and the urgency or the time scales and we're getting agreement. Phase two is what kind of a solution or an outcome are we really looking for here? And then we're getting agreement. And finally, in phase three, this is how I do things, shall we work together? 
The most important skill in selling is asking great questions and listening. Okay, so we have talked about how to package your offer. We've talked about the do it yourself, the done with you and done for you types of offering and also types of clients. And we've also covered the three phases of selling. So what questions do you have about packaging up your offerings or maybe about selling? Do let me know in the comment if you've got any, any questions or any comments yourself. What do you think? What's what's kind of resonating with you in terms of what I've just shared with you? Also, what's your next step? What's that next challenge in your life, in your business? What do you need to make you feel more confident? You can always book in a clarity call with me and let's get you moving past whatever is blocking your progress and onto that, onto that next challenge. Before I close up for today, I want to give you some clear next steps, which I always do, some concrete things that I suggest you do as a result of today's live. Firstly, look at your current offerings. Are you, are you still charging by the hour? Do you serve um, do-it-yourself, done with you and done for you types of clients? How could you, how could you think about that? your offerings in a different way. So the first step is really just to kind of assess where you are. And then of course, next, what types of clients there are you missing out on? What types of clients are you not currently serving that you might like to? What could you add to your offerings or maybe what could you tweak a bit to make it more appealing to other types of clients? And thirdly, you know what's coming, take some action. Get working on those three levels of service if that's what you decide you want to offer. Make sure your clients know that there are options in terms of how to work with you. That's really, really important. Often as we evolve our offerings and our business model, we forget to go back and tell our clients or previous clients that we are now offering XYZ. So make sure you're communicating about all the different ways your clients can deal with you. Please do let me know how you get on with this and do let me know if you need any support or you want to talk it through with me. I'm going to close up today's live with two quotes about your, your products and services. The first one is from Peter Drucker, who was an Austrian management consultant. Quality in a service or product is not what you put into it. It's what the client gets out of it. And secondly, from the American motivational speaker, Dennis Waitley, opportunities are problems in search of solutions. So what problem are you solving for your clients? Let's get you back in the driving seat of your business and building intentionally towards what you want. Decide what's really important to you and to your business and then stick to it consistently. Building a business is tough. I say that every week, right? It can be a really long, hard road. So please make sure that you're building something that's really meaningful to you, that's going to sustain you through those tough times. Be intentional. Say no to things that don't serve you and the goal that you want to achieve and as I pass back over to you that is really what I want you to take from today what is the outcome that you seek the result or the goal put your energy into getting really clear about that but allow yourself to do things your way yes of course you can learn from me you can learn from others but when you synthesize all of that learning when you bring it inside of you what comes out must be congruent with you and for you it must work for you. If you want to build a huge multinational, then go for it. If you just want to do your thing, then, then that's okay too. Of course it is. Focus on listening to yourself and ask yourself, what do you need so that you can spend more time in your flow? And don't forget that the opposite of flow is friction. So if things aren't really working, then take a bit of a step back and focus on getting some clarity. Get some objective input, maybe hire the services of a business coach, take some time to look at what you're doing and where an easier path would start from and lead to. Ask yourself, what would a business that really works for me look like? Let me know your thoughts and questions on this 
or any other topic relating to how to simplify, grow and enjoy your business. What area of business would you like me to speak about next? Also, who do you know who could benefit from joining this community or having a conversation with me? If you haven't already claimed your free copy of my first book, The Real Entrepreneur, then you can go to therealentrepreneurbook.com. If you prefer an Audible or a Kindle version, then you can find those on Amazon. I do check out the energy section of my book for more on serving your customers. Get the foundations right and you can absolutely build from there. I really hope that you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing and whoever you're doing it with. I wish you a really happy and peaceful time. And as always, if you want to talk, you know where I am. Please remember to be where you are in the journey. You don't need to know it all and you definitely don't have to do it all. Take care, stay safe and do keep in touch. Bye for now.